It's Ramsey Dewey and Tianyu. We're over here at the Animal MMA Gym in Shanghai, China, and we're going to show you one of my favorite techniques. The mule kick to the ankle pick. So how often does this happen? You got an over-under clinch, the guy reaches for an underhook or an overhook. You're pummeling. Oh no, he's got the underhook, so I'm going to grab a wizard. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to try the Uchimata, lift this up, but it's not bringing him down, so I'll pick out this ankle right there. So, I call it a mule kick to an ankle pick. You can also do it from an underhook. You have the underhook here, right? No problem, even better, a little more leverage. Use your inside leg, thigh against thigh, lift that up just like the Uchimata. Keep reaching down and pick up the ankle. Here, Tian, you wanna give that a try? So if I reach for the underhook, right, he's got the wizard, he lifts that up, and boom, just like that. Or maybe he has the underhook, same thing, underhook, leg, lift that up. Exactly. So we're using some leverage here. It's just like an ankle pick. You know, any ankle pick where we lift up the ankle, we got control of this. And, you know, there are a million different ways to do ankle picks. Right? Come down here. Oh, right? It's just controlling the ankle and blocking it so we can't balance on it. But the mule kick, this one, boom, right? If we use a lot of leverage, a lot of momentum and we get the guy off balance, you know, unbalance him first. Sometimes we can, you know, just throw him with that alone. But some people have really good balance. They're good at defending it. So one more time, lift that up. Keep going down, keep going down, keep going down. Grab the ankle. And there we go. And I find that's much higher percentage than just the Uchimata. Now we can use uch Uchimata in combination with other techniques too. Use the Uchimata and unbalance him. Not so much as the throw. Now he's up on one leg. And now we get Haregoshi right there. A really common reaction to Uchimata. I'll lift him up here. And now he'll start posturing up really hard. And so, boom, switch to the uppercut. Right? One more time. We lift. He's posturing up really hard. Boom, abandon the throw. Go for the uppercut. And then go for the throw anyway. Boom. Right? Here, you go, ahead. go ahead and do that to me. All right, so go for the throw, right? He's doing this, I'm like, oh, no, boom, right? Then he throws me anyway. What else can we do with Uchimata? Lift this leg up, and, you know, while he's still in balance, boom, switch to Ogoshi, or one of those other hip throws, or, right, I've got this wizard, I'm going for this, and maybe he slips that wizard out. He goes limp arm on me, boom, and he's out. We can go for the back, right? Or... Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uchimata is super versatile. Um, another thing you can do if you're having trouble finishing it, hop, 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 hop. Okay, you're doing that to me. So he goes for the Uchimata, lifts my leg, and it starts hopping. And yeah, that, that can be tremendously helpful. Shout out to Jeff Chan for that one. Uh, that, was a, that was a super useful tip. But again, my highest percentage finish for Uchimata isn't even the Uchimata. It's the mule kick to the ankle pick. Just remember, reach down low as you lift up that leg. Here, go and do that to me one more time. Boom. And even a smaller guy can take a bigger guy down. Really common question I'm asked, like, how does a smaller guy beat a bigger guy? Well, the same way a bigger guy beats a smaller skilled guy with skill, practice, persistence, and good technique. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.